Hello dear chess friends, uh, welcome back to the channel and let's see the fourth and final classical game of the match against Ding Liren. So this time I was playing black and as you remember in the previous game it started with c4 and I had some problems so I decided to change the opening for this one. It was important and uh, trying to get him out of book as well quite early and it worked out. So c4, knight f6, knight c3 e5, knight f3, knight c6, g3, and d5. c takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop g2. It's all a huge theory. There are a lot of lines here. Uh, black can play in different ways. One of the main is knight b6, certainly. And, um, okay, let's see what happened. So, I played a fashionable line with bishop c5. And there are many moves as well. It was played in the match of uh, uh, Carlson Caruana. Uh, there were a lot of uh, interesting ideas for both sides in these games, but um, generally here the line in general is okay for black, uh, but certainly they have to know what they're doing and it certainly is playable for both sides. So uh, in this one I expected more uh, kind of, um, you know, the classical fights, but instead in this game uh, he went, he entered the direct fight. So after this he played, yeah, so he went, sir. So he went here, knight takes e5 immediately. Um, I knew what's going on, what to do here for black, but uh, certainly it came as, uh, as a little surprise here. Because I more expected the main lines with Castel that he um, he later tried to play against me in this position in the rapid section, but we will see this, so uh, we will see it more carefully there. And now, so after knight takes c5, I went knight takes c3, uh, bishop takes c6. Otherwise, if white just takes on c3, then it's knight takes c5, d4, and bishop d6. Then taking back to e5 and uh, on e5, and uh, black is completely fine. So instead, after knight takes c3, it's bishop c6. Um, there was one more line. Yeah, is it here? Yeah, I mean, after bishop, uh, bishop takes c6, b takes c6. Now d takes c3 is possible. Um, then one of the lines, um, the most simple one is maybe queen e7. And practically black is just doing very well. Um, they have a great compensation for the pawn, no problems at all. Uh, beside that there is uh, queen takes d1, king takes d1, bishop takes f2. And now after rook f1 there is bishop c5, just retreating back. And we're not afraid of taking on f7. Say with the knight of course it's bad because of rook f8, but after rook takes f7 it's just bishop d6. And black is doing completely fine, and the way for white to play this, not to lose the game, is rook f3. Then black just takes on e5, rook is 3 castles, and then some rook f1, bishop goes out, and black is completely fine. So, this is not a problem for black. And that's why white is trying to play differently. He plays b takes c3, uh, queen d5. Knight f3 to defend both the knight and the rook that was hanging on h1. Now I went bishop h3, even though a castle short is possible as well, with good compensation for for the um, missing pawn. Black can go this, then play just rook e8, bishop d6, play for compensations. They're just fine. Um, it's around equal in general. But instead I went bishop h3, which was uh, my main line in the notes. Queen b3, trying to exchange the queens, otherwise the king is stuck in the center and you know, it's kind of complicated for, for white to get uh, to get uh, the castle. Uh, both sides now are dangerous for white's king. And um, their point is that they're having a pawn up so they can keep the good center and uh, avoid direct attacks. Otherwise, it's just very dangerous. So after queen b3, uh, for example, queen h5 is possible here. But this is possible. And then 
White is playing some Queen C4 and then trying Queen H4, seeking the exchange. In general, also good for Black, but uh, I mean nothing special for White. But still, they will exchange some Queens somewhere like this or this, and still White is uh, getting what they want to exchange the Queens. Maybe still still normal way to play for Black. But instead, I was um, going on the stuff that I was looking at here. This was kind of simplest way we saw it. So Bishop G2, Queen takes D5. C takes d5, rook g1, bishop takes f3, e takes f3. Uh, the point here is that white is a pawn up. In general, the position even after king d7 is kind of drawish. Uh, black will go king d7, then play some rook e8, c6, bishop d6, rook b8, exchange everything. Even though that the computer shows that uh, it's better for white, it's because of the uh, pawn up simply. But uh, in fact, it's not uh, winning at all for white. It's around equal still. And um, black is maintaining the equality. Uh, but still needs some kind of precision. So um, over the board, um, I saw that this was the main move in our lines. And actually it was, it's the best move. Uh, D4 here, because I'm also threading a lot of stuff. I want to castle long, play rook e8, play d3 somewhere. This one is hanging, rook can penetrate on e2. So it's kind of tricky for white as well if they don't manage to put their pieces well. So after d4, C takes d4, just bishop takes d4, and then castle long, it's just fine for black. So rook b1 instead. Castle long. It's the right way to play, certainly king belongs here, and uh, you know, immediately, not only castling, but also developing the rook to d8, so having a great uh, central play for my pieces. A great compensation for the missing pawn, the g1 rook is also out of play, bishop c1 is stuck there. Not sure what uh, white really should do. Um, he decides to play for rook b5. The rest is also kind of drawish. So, I mean, even sometimes even slightly worse for white, but not much for black, though. But yeah, rook b5 seems like a only legal try here. So, rook b5, rook h8, even though a bishop b6 was just good, just as good as this. Because we're not afraid of c4. Uh, c5 is never a threat because of c6 attacking the rook, counter-attacking it, and then getting a good position. So instead of this, I went rook h8, even though bishop b6 is also very natural. But rook h8 is more natural for the human eye, just to develop the rook on the open file and uh, just give check. And also then I can think about moving my bishop. So rook h8, king d1. Yeah, king f1 would be too strange. Just d takes c3, then bishop b6, and rooks are penetrating on d1, e2, and uh, black is just playing for a win, in fact, instead of trying to equalize. So king d1, bishop b6. Now c4 would be a loss of time, and uh, actually just kind of play for a loss, not for a win, as Tarish would say here. So after this, just d3. As I said, we're not afraid of c5 because of c6, attacking the rook and just taking back the pawn on c5 after the rook moves to b3 or anywhere. Uh, after c4, d3 the f2 is hanging rook is coming to e2 let's say if white goes some rook f1 just rook e6 or rook e2 as i said c5 is not a threat so black is doing more or less whatever they wish here so they're just fine yeah and um also rook e6 is possible instead of rook e2 putting the rook on c6 and attacking c4 very unpleasant for white of course, it's what, it was not the plan of Ding Liren. He wanted to try something without uh, real risk and uh, some kind of slight pressure. He was better on time in general. So he went here, c takes d4. Bishop takes d4. Um, yeah, now he could go rook e1, that computer suggests. Then bishop takes f2. Rook e8, rook e8. Rook h5, kind of pretending that we're attacking finally, but uh, h6 simply, bishop b2, f6. And my rook will go to e1, to h1, attack those pawns there, g3, h2. Black is completely fine, I don't see any problem here, and uh, certainly uh, Ding also didn't see any problem here for black, so... It's completely fine for black. So instead he tries rook f1, at least trying to keep the pawn up and uh, still kind of uh, asking some questions. 
So I have to be precise here, not to miss some kind of play, you know, that the king goes out, maybe some exchange of the bishops with the pawn up. Some rook and games can be slightly worse when I take the pawn back and he activates his king. So um, here, in general, what I thought is that I have to go for the a2 pawn. And I did it in the right manner, actually. Compi also supports this. I went rook e6. Rook d6 is also possible. I went rook e6. Just trying to activate my rook as it's not going to be exchanged anytime soon. Rook a5 was a possibility here. Trying to stop rook a6. But then king b7 is good. Rook c6 is also good. This one or king b7. Black is just fine. I mean, the pieces are active. The pawns are, you know, um, kind of double pawns there on f, so not a huge threat for now. And king is very badly placed on d1, always runs under some attacks. So after this, after this rook e6, already I saw that he doesn't like in general kind of position he has. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not kind of a big chance for white. So uh, he just went bishop b2, trying already to exchange some of my active pieces. I have seen that this is also very close to a draw and uh, kind of a game that kind kind of ex, uh, instructive, but I mean rook goes to e1, white is a pawn up, but look at their pawns, like d2, a2, what is it like? It's like, uh, you know, they're hanging all the times, so it's uh, the potential target for the targets for black rook. And um, now just king d7, rook e4, rook d3. Rook e3, rook d5, rook let's say e3. And generally just a draw, g6, then rook b5, rook b2. I mean, black is completely fine, but why to play without the pawn if I can just take the pawn immediately? Uh, I saw during the game and went for them the way that seemed the easiest to me, rook a6, attacking a2, bishop takes d4, rook takes d4, rook b2, certainly defending this pawn, otherwise I will just take it and it will be better in the end game. so rook b2 of course, rook d a4, I was searching for some straightforward way to make a draw here, exhaustion, but beside that of course uh, this is the fourth game, very important, uh, otherwise I mean the winner of this game is... Uh, is the winner of the World Cup and beside that uh, I'm getting a good position out of the opening and so of course I didn't want to spoil it um, as black so I decided just to go for some straightforward way without playing uh, the pawn down position in the rook end game so I went rook a4, rook e1 activating the rook trying to come there on e7 or e8 um, king d7 stopping this active rook because otherwise if I just take on a2 white can take, take and rook e7 and uh, they're close to winning the end game. Of course, I'm not allowing this. King d7 is the move. But I had to be careful about uh, some rook penetrations on the 8th rank. And it's what happened. Rook b8. Rook d6 is some very cool move by the compi. Defending more or less everything. Then just playing g6. King c6. a2 is always hanging there. So one of the possibilities to make a draw as well. But this one is just a straightforward draw. Rook e8. Otherwise, if the, the other rook comes to e8, it's just rook a1 check. And taking the e1, it's even slightly better for black. So rook e8. Rook f6 was a possibility, also very drawish. Uh, but instead, I just went rook a1, which is the easiest way, I think. After king c2, it's just rook c6, king b2. And at least rook cc1, as minimum, black has a draw here. Um, so instead he went king e2, rook e6, rook takes, king takes, rook e8. Now, yeah, after rook e8, the point is that if I go to d6, white can start chasing the pawns, attack g7, h7, just creates unnecessary problems for black, uh, which has which I was not interested in, so of course I went king f6. And then it's just a simple way and a funny way to defend all my pawns. It's rook c1, rook a8, rook a1, rook c8, 
and uh, the draw was agreed here um, and we are on 2-2 two -two there and um, we went straight into the tie breaks but before the tie breaks we had a day off and um, no we didn't have a day off did we have a day off I think not No, oh, I think not. I think it was played on the third of October, and the next day was the was the match simply. Yeah, no day offs here. Yeah. So um, no day off, and the next day we were playing the rapid, and then the blitz sessions and so on. But I'm going to analyze it um, deeper uh, because the games were very complicated there and very uh, a lot of moments, you know, and decisive moments for both sides. So we will see it and. Um, Certainly, it's um, it's an interesting part of the match. After this game, the 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 exciting part started with the rapids, and um, the cool games are to follow. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to get all the notifications, and um, please comment with your thoughts and ideas for the other videos or what you want me to change. Or what you are generally interested in but uh, for now i will go on and uh, finish the world cup and then decide for the other videos thank you so much for watching and stay tuned bye bye